So welcome, ladies, to the Awaken Femme Power Masterclass. I am super excited to be here. My name's Sarah. If you're new to my world, I am a feminine embodiment coach, and I also help female spiritual entrepreneurs launch their businesses online. But the reason I am hosting this masterclass is because I'm super passionate about what I see happening in the collective, which is uh, so many of us waking up to really fully embodying our divine feminine energy, our feminine essence, which is not gender specific. So we're going to dive into that. It is not speaking to gender when I talk about feminine energy or masculine energy. And so I'd love to just know in the chat box here, um, what really motivated you to join today? And I, I do read all of your registrations when you register. And I saw so many, um, but some not everybody here that registered attended, right? So the ones that really, you know, if you're here with me today, it's for a reason. And so what really was it that intuitively, and just feel free to drop it in the chat box. Like, is it just to learn more about feminine energy? Is it um, because you have a life transition happening, something going on there? Um, what really registered with you that, um, that uh, really motivated you for me to show up today? So let me go ahead. You're feeling pulled to somehow incorporate healing energy work and knowledge into your wedding and branding photography business. Ooh, that's creative. I love that. That's so creative. Yes. And, and blending feminine and masculine energy in business is something that I'm really passionate about. So that's perfect. So that's really fun. Thank you for sharing that. Does anybody else want to share? She's launching her healing and coaching business. The goal this year is to learn more, lean more into feminine energy. Um, and you found me on IG. Perfect. Perfect. You're in the right place. I love that. And Suryani, I hope I'm Suryani. I hope I'm saying that right. You've taken a course called Feminine Power and opened you up to wanting to learn more. I love that. So if you guys could drop like a one in, if you're brand new to this concept, or you're brand new to this topic or a 10, if you're super experienced in it already, just so I can get a little gauge on where everybody's at. And that sort of helps, um, helps with the, today's call. If I know where masterclass, where I know if everybody's, where I, if I know where everybody is. Um, yeah. So brand new two, five. Someone pulling yourself out of depression and getting your confidence back. Perfect. Yeah, definitely. We're going to talk about this. Just starting to learn more and new to this topic. Awesome. So I love this. And this, these, these calls flow organically. I do have like a structure of what I want to say and what I would like to share in these, but they do have a life of their own based on the energy of who shows up and who who is here with us today, right? Who's here as part of this collective group, which is happening one time only. This is, you know, this is a unique experience that only happens once. And everybody that's here has a collective role into what how this unfolds. So I do encourage you to share, even if it's anonymously in the chat as we move along. It helps this uh, stay interactive and more engaged and really fun. And you'll get more out of it. Your brain like shifts something when you stay engaged. And so if you're not, you know, multitasking or if you're on social media or you're doing all these other things right now, I just ask that, you know, we dedicate the next 40 minutes to really the reason that you showed up, the intention behind why you showed up and what you're looking to take away from this. And I'm going to ask that everybody stay muted. Thank you. Welcome, Janice. Uh, for years, masculine energy was so much stronger, especially at work. Yes, yes. And I realized I've been pushing the feminine part of me lower. Currently, I'm working on balancing both. Perfect. So let's dive into this. So prior to, and Monica is going to be aware of this, prior to, you know, being a, a spiritual business mentor and feminine embodiment coach to women, uh, my previous life was in real estate. And it was very much a hustle, right? So very much you know, go, 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 burnout, overwhelm, eating every meal in my car, working until I was completely exhausted, um, chasing that proverbial carrot outside of myself. So success, money, more clients, you know, even commitment from a healthy relationship, like every single thing I was chasing outside of myself at this point in my life, really um, feeling guilty when I took time off to the point where, you know, 
I had like zero healthy boundaries around my time or my energy. Um, and that was with clients, that was with relationships, that was with work, that was with projects, that was that was just, you know, everything. Numbing out to wine or Netflix and binges and things like that, like anything to distract myself. So I was either really busy, busy on the go, or I was numbing out to things, anything. The ego was doing anything to keep me from really focusing inward. Um, so total lack of self-care was happening at that time, carrying literally the weight of the world on my shoulders. Um, and that was just a really sneaky way for me to not release uh, control, right? Because I felt like I had to do everything. So I couldn't trust other people to do anything for me, right? Whether that be in a relationship or whether that be an employee or whether that be a team member, I had to do everything myself. So I carried the weight of the world on my shoulders in order to make things happen and get things done, which was really just a sneaky way to camouflage like this really like this control freak that I was. Um, and what I did was I created another mask for myself. So um, I now wore this mask of being misindependent and I can do everything myself and I don't need anybody else. And I literally pride myself up on that. I wore it like a badge of honor and really pat myself on the back that I could do everything myself and I don't need anybody else and this and that. And so this independence was something that I sort of like wore as a badge of honor. Um, and really, um, that was just a sneaky way to keep people from getting too close, right? So I could easily push things away, whether that be, you know, especially in relationships. It was just something, it was just another way for me to, to, to push away. Um, I was often uh, wearing, you know, a happy face to the external world, but inside of things were crumbling. My health was failing. Um, my relationships were failing. I was easily moved to anger and irritation very, very easily. If things were not working out perfectly in my favor, um, I was also a perfectionist. So everything had to look a certain way on the external world in order for me to, you know, keep it all together and keep that front going. Right. And so, but on the inside, you know, I started to develop st stress-related health issues, right? Because if you can imagine, and maybe you've experienced any of this, then this is a very hyper-controlling, constricted energy to be in that was very much over-masculinated energy, but not a healthy masculine energy. It was masculine energy that was really going out in the world, doing a lot and protecting, but doing it from a false place doing it from this wounded feminine inner place right and so I use the word wounded loosely because I don't believe we're wounded at our core but we have picked up possibly conditioning along our way um, that has helped that um, conditions us to believe something other than us being um, fully whole and complete already Right. And so this keeps us seeking, this keeps us grasping, this keeps us running, this keeps us protecting. We need something outside of ourselves to make ourselves feel better, whether that be more clients, more money, a fancier car, a bigger house, a relationship or any of those things. And so that's pretty much where I was. And um, candida, leaky gut, adrenal fatigue, hormone imbalances, food allergies. Um, uh, what else? Uh, pneumo uh, flu after flu after flu still showing houses while I'm sick with the flu until eventually I landed myself with pneumonia in the ER. And that still wasn't enough to sort of wake me up to the fact that something, you know, what, how to fix this, you know, it was just some, it, it started to shine a light a little bit that I did, I did need to take my power back in some way. Um, on top of that, I was attracting a revolving door of like non-committal men or men that didn't really honor my values um, or respect my boundaries or honor me in the way that I knew I deserved. And so that was just a mirror reflecting back to me how I was always actually self-abandoning myself. And so I could only attract other people that would reflect that back to me. And also, I had a very closed off heart. Remember, I was pushing everything away. So I wasn't really open to receive. I wasn't vulnerable. I wasn't open. I was overly protected. I was overcompensating for a, perce a perceived void within myself that doesn't actually exist. And this kept me in this revolving door, attracting people, met, uh, attracting relationships that would never require me to get too close, right? Because they, I was only attracting other men that would not commit or not be open to intimacy and all of the things I craved on a court on a on a on a human level, a deeper connection, 
um, I wasn't able to attract that in. I was only able to attract in the, the counterpart that would not require me to actually get that close or be that vulnerable. And so at one point, my solution was that I was just going to sell my house and I was just going to sell everything. And I was going to move to Costa Rica and just go do yoga on the beach and just escape. And that was a fancy form of escapism. And to be honest, probably the only reason I didn't do that was because I had fur babies and I couldn't figure out how to get them on a plane and move them accordingly. And that didn't feel right. So that's probably the only thing that kept me anchored where I was, or I probably would have done that. But that was just a fancy form of escapism. Um, to try to escape because ego loves to numb out it loves to fight against and it loves to escape right so so on a deep level I found myself in a place in my life where all I craved was ease and freedom and peace and a harmonious loving relationship physical well-being being feeling really good in my body and you know a close relationship and all of those things right but I literally had the opposite of all of those things I was in an engagement that I with someone I wasn't in love with I knew I shouldn't have been engaged to my health was failing my work was a hustle that was depleting me and draining me um not to say that there weren't good things happening in life, but when I looked at my core values of what I truly craved, I had the opposite of all of those things. And so what I did do at that point in, in my in my life when I didn't move to Costa Rica and escape at all, because that's just not what was available to me at that time. It didn't register. It, it was just, you know, a, a way to escape. It wasn't my reality. I didn't make that happen. Um, and luckily so. But what I did do was I started to dive deeper into things like studying nutrition, cleaning up my diet. I went vegan for a year, right? Um, I healed my gut naturally. I started yoga teacher training. I started energy healing um, and I got certified as a Reiki master and all of these things. I meditated. Um, I went solo traveling all around the world um, in search, you know, just soul search, just solo traveling, very self-reflective, right? and soul searching, I guess you could say. And while my symptoms did get better because I attacked it on the physical level, I attacked what was happening in the 3D physical reality, which is what we tend to do when we first start to um, notice these imbalances, we'll, we'll go after what is most tangible to us where we can see the most immediate results. I was able to shift my diet and see immediate results. I was able to you know, start to heal. Uh, my body and I was able to start to reduce stress and things like that. So on a tangible physical level, things started to clear up a little bit. However, I was still, um, this inner resistance was still there. This controlling was still there. The revolving door of relationships reflecting back to me what something that was not harmonious was still there. Um, the knee jerk reaction to overdo and overwork work and push and not trust was still there. The cyclical patterns of, of hustle and burnout were still there. And so while some stuff started to clear up, especially the, the health related stuff, it left me, okay, well, what's, where do I go from here? Right. And so this is where I started obviously to dive deeper into energy because I was already attuned to Reiki and opening up to the fact that everything is energy and this and that. Um, and so then, you know, really diving into feminine and masculine energy and discovering that now these are not gender specific, that they actually are energies that exist within all of us. And it's actually part of this dualistic nature that allows us to exist in this 3D reality. It actually composes all like any experience that we have is composed of both feminine and masculine energies in this interplay of seemingly opposites, this duality that we live in. I don't want to project my belief system, but I do believe that we come from source or oneness or all that is or infinite, whatever. Like, I don't know it. I don't know that. It's not a conceptual thing. It's not something the mind can wrap around, but I believe that there's something that this is, you know, that's creating all of this or is part of all of this, right? And in order for that to exist in this 3D reality, there has to be an opposite of it. Otherwise it would still all be oneness or it'd still all be source, right? And so this duality, this polarity that plays out, this feminine and masculine energy is literally the energy that creates worlds. I think Alan Watts said that everything can be explained in, the, in re relation to yin and yang, right? 
And so we see this as part of how our experience in this 3D world is created um, or experienced. And it's also energies that exist within ourselves. And so being able to identify this toxic pattern that, that we can get stuck in this toxic loop of feminine and masculine energy was key in fully own, coming into a place of empowerment and breaking these cycles and fully owning my divine worth as you know, divine worth from within. So it silences and, and um, reduces this need to constantly be seeking validation and external approval outside of ourselves, which is literally the carrot that keeps us chasing and seeking, right? It's also the last place we'll tend to go. We'll tend to look for everything else to fix us first, whether it's meditation or yoga, very perceived good things, right? You know, like, oh, it's fitness or this, or that. like there's so many things we can cling to as an external tool that is meant to quote unquote, fix us or heal us or make us feel better or, what, or whatnot. And they may do that. Some of these modalities do that. But if it's used as a tool externally outside of yourself to quote unquote fix or heal or anything like that, then what it is, is it's still holding that power outside of yourself, right? And so before I go further into that, that's just a little bit on how I got here. And I would love to know if any of that resonates with you in the chat box. And if you want to unmute, you raise your hand and definitely unmute. Just know for full disclaimer, if you do speak, that there's a chance that you could be seen on social media when this gets repurposed. So does any, if you want to use the chat box, that's perfectly fine as well. So um, does anybody resonate with any of that? To know, Let's check. Is it okay if I say something? Oh, sure. Melissa, go ahead. <laughs> Well, sorry, I'm the only person with my video on, but I feel like you need somebody to look at when you're talking, whenever I host Zooms, so I always feel like that, but um, I can definitely turn it off if that's better. But mm. um, I've got, I've, running my own business is very similar to running, you know, Realty, which of course you have more to do with like the market and all, but it is exhausting. And I feel like I have done every type of escapism that I could find, <laughs> um, whether it was drinking wine or traveling a ton, getting a whole lot of destination weddings so that my best friend and I were just leaving, just leaving everything and going and, you know, we're working, but, mm -hmm. you know, working in San Diego is a lot more fun than working in <laughs> South Carolina. Um, but I started with the meditating and yoga and then got into the nutrition, but it definitely resonated. I feel like that's probably a lot of our journey. Mm, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing let me go ahead and look at the chat box in corporate jobs for so long. I was in corporate jobs for so long and used masculine energy. It exhausted me. I started my own business and I feel more in tune with myself. Perfect. Uh, and, and that's true. When you start your own business as well, there's a lot of masculine energy that it takes to run a business or and start something from scratch and all of those. It's a very results driven, task oriented, goal driven kind of environment. Um, just very much like my real estate sales career, right? So it's all, so this is really, um, so what we're going to dive into is, is, is a little, is, is how to help balance that and how to come into what is more in the flow, right? By really identifying the toxic loops of feminine masculine energy when they are in a toxic loop, diving deeper into the actual source of that a little bit. And then I'm going to share some exercises so we can just sort of tap in and see, uh, you know, which, you know, where you feel like you're resonating with this the most. And so that will be more towards the end, but I just wanted to dive into feminine and masculine energy really quick, especially because I know there's so many on the call right now that this is a brand new um, topic. And so that they're just ex starting to explore. So when I speak about feminine and masculine energy, this is not again, gender specific. So I want you to think that like, I'll just, okay. So feminine energy exists on the subtle realm. Right. So this is the realm that we can't see, taste and touch. This is not the 3D. It's the subtle realm. So this is our inner beingness. This is going within your feminine essence is your inner world. Right. Where the masculine expresses in the physical realm. And so this is the externalized world. 
It's very much the one that we can see, taste, and touch. It's our 3D reality that brings structure to this experience that we're having. Because we're having an energetic, we're energy, right? And we're having this energetic experience, but we're also seemingly having this very 3D, tangible, touch it, taste it, feel, feel it reality. So the masculine energy represents the externalized physical realm. The feminine energy represents the subtle inner realm beingness, right? So because we have been so conditioned in a masculine driven culture and society, most of us, um, especially in business, especially in the corporate world, especially just in life in general, um, because the masculine is externally focused, it's what we can use to validate ourselves external by externally, right? It's what we can tap into. And now we can, we can validate ourselves by other people in this reality and say, okay, now I'm good enough. Now I stack up. Now I can see how I compare to somebody else in this externalized society that I can see. I can compare myself with how I look. I can compare myself with the job I have. I can compare myself with how much money I make. I can compare myself with what I, what I wear. I can compare. And, and so this comparison um, and this uh, is how we can often judge our worthiness. Our innate worthiness is now being used as uh, you know, as a carrot outside of ourselves that's being judged in this externalized reality that it represents the, the physical realm, right? And so this is why it's so easy to fall into this trap of more doing instead of more being, more results-oriented instead of more inner alignment, right? And so all the things that we'll grasp onto or that we'll chase outside of ourselves is ultimately a carrot that we're continuously chasing in order to help validate ourselves because we're not finding the validation from within. And this doesn't mean we can't have success or we can't run businesses and we can't own companies and we can't be in corporate positions and we can't build our dream business and this and that. And we can't have fancy houses or, or beautiful things. Like it's not about rejecting anything because it's all part of the whole. Everything is part of the whole, right? There's nothing outside of totality. There's nothing outside of this oneness. There's nothing outside of it. It's all part of the whole. So we can experience those things without being attached to those things as a form of validation when we come into inner alignment with our own feminine essence and take our power back as a um, divinely worthy being. And then we're not seeking outside of ourselves to validate. Now we're just experiencing life from a place of um, joy and love um, for whatever's arising in your experience and for appreciating the beautiful things that come into life, but you're not attached to them. There's no neediness energy around it, right? So the neediness energy would be what we call quote unquote wounded feminine energy. That's the, what I refer to in, with some of our coaching clients, the prostitute archetype, the prostitute archetype, which is just um, an energetic imprint. It's like that we can to be tapped into when this energy is really present in your field this is the neediness energy right that goes out and is always seeking some form of external safety security validation or approval outside of ourselves which is what keeps the hustle going which is what keeps chasing the carrot right um and keeps the escapism going and keeping all of those things going right um it is also what keeps us from speaking our truth um, having healthy boundaries, like I referenced earlier, saying yes when we mean yes and no when we mean no, um, getting in touch and honoring ourselves, even if that means walking away from something that's not in alignment, that would be an example of really having a healthy boundary, right? So when this prostitute archetype is selling herself short in our energetic field and constantly selling ourselves short for something externalized, this is that wounded feminine energy that is creating a toxic loop. And what that does is when we're stuck in any form of that needy feminine energy, what it brings about, because there's yin and yang, they go together. They're two sides of the same coin. The masculine energy then comes in because it's, it's always there too, but it's acting on this false sense of reality that you're not already a worthy being. And so the masculine energy goes out and tries to protect and tries to 
create boundaries. But instead of creating a healthy boundary, for example, it might create a wall because it's like overcompensating for what doesn't feel safe, right? And so this needy feminine energy brings in the counterpart to that is the toxic masculine energy that is overcompensating. And this can look like overgiving, over hustling, overdoing, really rigid um, with your boundaries. So you're literally creating walls like I did around my heart. It wasn't a healthy boundary. It was like literally a wall, which is why I was only attracting in counterparts that could only reflect back to me that wall. It would never require me to actually break it down, right? Because there was a lack of vulnerability. So when we get stuck in this loop, it's the feminine energy is not in alignment with her values. She's not in alignment with her bound, healthy boundaries. She's not speaking her truth. She's not um, saying yes when she means yes, no when she means no. She's This is when the masculine energy will come in, but it'll be a toxic pattern, right? And so when we flip the script on that, and when we start to bring our power back by going within into the feminine essence of who we truly are, which is a divine being. And we start to honor ourselves and we start to set the, this is when the masculine will come in and have um, its healthy version that, that is, you know, a mere reflection of that feminine energy, right? They're two sides of the same coin. This is where you can draw a boundary in this uh, line in the sand and draw that healthy boundary, but fully own it from a place of value and not feel guilty about it and not people please for the sake of trying to seek that validation anymore outside of yourself. So you can say, oh, well, now that I've pleased that person, now I can be worthy again, right? So if you look at a woman that just fully owns her feminine essence and fully owns her power from a place of true empowerment from within, she has a very strong masculine energy as well. She has no problem saying no. She has no problem not taking on more on her plate that doesn't feel good, right? She has no problem not overworking herself. She has no problem having self-care routines. She has no problem having a healthy boundary around what she feels like she wants to do and what she doesn't, right? She's tuned in and tapped into her value system. She's tuned in and tapped into her essence. She's tuned in and tapped into her intuition and she trusts it. And she can say yes when she means yes. And she can say no when she means no with zero apologies or even care if anybody actually likes it or not, right? Because she fully owns who she is and she fully owns her value and she fully owns from the inside out from a place of empowerment. Is that making sense? So this is not gender specific. This is actually happening in females and males or whatever gender you identify with. Um, men are waking up to their feminine essence as well, becoming more vulnerable, opening up their heart, expressing their emotions, you know, and they're, and so this is happening in the collective, not just females. I just happen to help females because I am a, a female and that's who I resonate with. So that's who I decide to have these calls with, but it's happening um, in the collective, both male and female. Is that making sense? Does anybody have any comments or anything that they want to share about that? And I will look in the comments right now. I know I can only check them like periodically because it's sort of distracting. So I like to check in, but um, is anybody resonating with that or have any questions, comments that they'd like to share? Mm. totally resonates makes perfect sense resonate with that as well i love this other comment too of um feeling called to find more balance in your day and show up in the present yes the feminine lives in the present moment right very connected to the present moment she speaks her truth she nurtures her body, her mind, and her spirit. She shares authentically. So this is about really expressing your most authentic expression as well. Because the only reason we wouldn't do that is because we're trying to fit into a box somehow in order to gain some other kind of approval in order to, again, validate ourselves. So this is about full authentic expression, speaking your truth, living in the present, um, embracing um, your sensuality, embracing your sexuality, being open to receive instead of closed off, um, really knowing your worth on an inner level, 
and trust and your values and trusting your intuition. And to take it a step further, it's also about being very connected to your emotions and um, being able to feel safe in your body. Because the oftentimes the reason we guard ourselves and the reason this feminine needy energy gets clicked into high gear to begin with is because at some point along our journey, we've been conditioned in some way to believe some, some limited belief that for some reason, it's not safe to be open. It's not safe to be vulnerable. It's not safe to speak our truth. It's not safe to be authentically me. It's not safe to share our gift with the world. It's not, you know, safe to share our message. It's not okay to say yes. It's not okay to say no to somebody. Like we've been conditioned along the way, whether um, intentionally or not through society, through, you know, whoever our authority figures were growing up, you know, it can happen in so many different ways where we've just been conditioned over time to completely not you know to not trust our intuition and to, and to and to sort of ignore that inner essence and focus more externally for all of reasons that I've already listed right to continuously focus externally outside of ourselves but what can happen is is that we end up chasing this carrot potentially our whole life and consistently being stuck on this hamster wheel of life chasing, 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 doing, 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 trying to do more instead of really, really coming into alignment with more being, beingness and allowing ourselves then to express from that place. So the feminine energy is very creative in nature, right? Even, you know, as a female being able to create a baby, right? So like the feminine energy in us is very creative in nature. And when we're allowed to, when we finally allow ourselves to release control and allow, trust our intuition and allow ourselves to go inward, this is actually when we also release a lot of that creative power. Um, and this is where, when you're talking about having a business or anything like that, like creative sparks of insight can arise when we're not in this constricted energy controlling and trying to do everything and um, trying to figure everything out from that, a logical place or from an analytical place, right? And so, so for example, masculine energy um, is very much stuck in the analytical brain, right? Very much logical, very much um, action oriented, results driven, analytical, logical mind, thinking, you know, very strong, but from on a physical sense in the external world, right? Whereas the feminine energy is very um, intuitive, very empathic, very connected to her emotions, trusting herself, very empowered, but from an inner place, right? And so you can see that this is the yin and the yang. This is two sides of the same coin, and both are required in order to fully come into alignment, right? You won't have one without the other. You won't be able to be in needy feminine energy and then have a healthy masculine energy. It, it doesn't work that way, right? Because you can't go set a boundary your masculine energy won't set a boundary around something that you're not valuing. Does that make sense? When you do come into fully valuing something, then your masculine energy can set a healthy boundary. So they go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. Does that make sense? I'm going to look at the chat real quick. I'll take a sip of my coffee. Mm -hmm. Makes perfect sense. Something's resonating. I feel this so much. Yes, that makes sense. Perfect. Yay. So when you think about feminine energy, feminine energy um, represents, you could say, the laws of nature. You know, you can't see them, but they're there. The laws of nature that exist in all things, the ebbs and the flows, the fluidity, the cycles, you know, nature itself. It's very, there's this flow to it right so it's very much um connects to our feminine essence this is why even being in nature will really help connect to your feminine essence right it's this it's this unseen you know subtle realm that exists in all things um that syncs us up with the entire you know world like even our menstrual cycle syncs right so it's like there's this unseen force there's this unseen essence that is truly who we are that creates this 3D expression, right? But this is like, and so when you think about the feminine energy representing 
the laws of nature, you can think of the masculine energy representing our societal rules and uh, our societal law, man-made laws. And this is what gives us structure and stability and foundation, right? Which is also necessary for us to coexist in this 3D reality. So the masculine is very grounded. It's very stable. It's very resilient. It's very strong. Uh, provide structure, provides support, provides protection, is very giving. Masculine energy loves to give. When it's in a toxic loop, it loves to overgive, right? Overcompensate, overgive, which then only leads to more depletion, right? The feminine is very receiving. Masculine is very giving. So feminine is very receiving. So I think you can see this play of opposites, this polarity, this duality that exists. Um, and I would love to open this up to any questions or comments before we dive into a couple of exercises and help you identify maybe some of these toxic loops. Um, and it'll be a real quick exercise. And we do have about eight minutes left. So if anybody wants to share um, or has a question, you can throw it in the chat box. And if you're off camera, then you can still share audibly and you won't be seen, but your name still might be seen when this, uh, if this gets repurposed uh, or on the replay. Go ahead and read this real quick. Okay, so I have been learning to set boundaries only the past five years after the end of a relationship and also when my corporate life was disaster, but how come it is so hard to build and keep boundaries when it's a good thing to build? Seems like I am being tested even though I am doing some progress. Okay, so she's at work right now, so she can't come on camera, I love it. <laughs> Okay, so let's dive into this. Obviously, this is a little limited and it's, you know, as far as like the exchange because I can't speak right to you right now, but let's just answer this. So how come it's so hard to build and keep boundaries when it's a good thing to build? Well, this is where, this would be where you want to ask yourself, why, what is it? Like at that moment when there's a choice point to be made um, and there's a boundary, you have the intention of setting a boundary. So first I'm assuming you're getting clear on your values of what you value. So you know what a healthy boundary would be, but then there's always going to be a reflection back um, and that opportunity to step into what I call sacred action. And sacred action is something that can invoke fear but it's also what you're intuitively guided to do or take action on, but it usually invokes some kind of fear. And so oftentimes if boundaries are not being honored, it's usually because there's a fear there of what happens if you don't, right? And that could be like losing a relationship. That could be like upsetting somebody. That could be like, you know, whether that's a, your job or something else, like that could be not getting the approval or the validation or the safety or the security in some way, shape or form that you would normally get. It's in a false sense of safety and a false sense of security and a false sense of validation and a false sense of approval. Nonetheless, you would not be able to necessarily get that if the boundary um, was honored. And so by not honoring the boundary, you still are able to latch on to that carrot, that, that thing that's dangling in front of you. Um, and so that boundary, and this could be different for everybody, that that boundary could be like not over, you know, like having a healthy boundary around time and energy, right? But then if you set that intention that you want to have a, you know, a healthy boundary around your time and energy, let's say it's in the workplace, and then all of a sudden, you know, there's someone that asks you if you can take on a new project, and you don't honor your time and boundary, then there, there's the reason for that is because you're still receiving something by not honoring that boundary. And it needs to get clear on what that is. And this is deeper than just drawing, a, it's deeper, it's about going in, like what part of you doesn't feel safe to draw that boundary? What part of you feels like you're gonna lose something if you draw that boundary? What are you afraid of losing? What are you afraid um, is keeping you from feeling safe and honoring yourself and honoring that boundary? What are you expecting to get um, or what are you fearing you're not going to get if you don't draw that boundary? And so this is where that, that um, needy energy can be very subtle or it could be very, very strong. 
rooted in lack or loss or some kind of fear around not receiving that external sense of validation outside of yourself. And that's what would keep in, you know, without, you know, that's what would ultimately keep someone from drawing that healthy boundary. There's usually a sacred action that occurs that will invoke fear, but it is intuitively guided as your next step or something that you want, you, you intuitively know that this is what you want to be saying or doing um, or allowing or not allowing. Um, and so there's some kind of action or inaction involved in that process that will invoke fear and require courage. The masculine energy is very courageous. So if there's a failure to set a healthy boundary, this is the masculine energy that requires courage, which courage wouldn't be required if there was no sense of fear there. Courage is only required if there's a sense of fear there. The masculine energy is very courageous, right? It's very protective. So one that goes out and draws that line in the sand and owns it and, and, and like, that's it. That's what's happening. Right. And so, um, the masculine energy requires courage in the face of that fear, which would be that sacred action. I hope that's resonating. And if it does take it, and if it doesn't resonate, don't take it. But with, you know, that's the best I can explain it without having a dialogue here. So I hope some of that made sense to somebody on the call. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read the chat again here. Okay, a few questions here. So let's dive into this. Boundaries are new for me just in the last 14 months. Now I'm cutting things left and right. At which point do we worry about selfishness? Also, how do you know when it's time to take action? Masculine energy versus trusting, allowing yourself to receive. I hope questions make sense. Okay, so let's dive into, there's a, two questions here. I'm cutting things left and right. At which point do we worry about selfishness? And so this is as a, you know, I just find also as a female, we worry about selfishness so much and we're, we're so much more concerned about putting um, other people's needs in front of our own so often. And we end up in very people pleasing modes um, where we put ourselves last and we make everybody else a priority whether that be clients, whether that be re other relationships, however it looks for you. And so this borders on that, really tapping into that energy of feeling, you know, why would it feel selfish to actually honor yourself first, right? To fill your cup up first, to honor your values, right? Um, instead of the reverse opposite of that would be, you know, the people pleasing, right? Right putting other people or putting other people's needs in front of our own. And so this is just something to dive deeper in and self-reflect on. Let me make sure I got the question right now. I'm putting things at which point do we worry about selfishness? I don't worry about selfishness, uh, to be honest. And I feel that um, when you're intuitive, and this is part, part of your next question, how do we know when it's time to take action, masculine energy versus trusting and allowing yourself to receive? Okay, so the mass... When something feels intuitively right for you, there is an ability to be able to trust that. And when you're able to trust your own intuit, your own intuition, then you know the steps that you're taking are not selfish. They're self-honoring, right? So the question is, is this selfish really? Or is this just self-honoring? And when we're, and when we're acting on our intuition and we're, following that thread of what feels right for us and is self-honoring selfishness sort of doesn't really exist anymore because of it, it's just like a different energy right it's a different frame of being right it's a different energy I hope that's making sense so I would question is this really selfish or is it self-honoring and if it's self-honoring then how could it be selfish Right. And so the other part of your question is, how do you know when it's time to take action, masculine energy versus trusting, allowing yourself to receive? OK, so this can play out in so many different areas. But what I always say with this is feminine, masculine energy go hand in hand. So opening, receiving and taking aligned action. So aligned action is different than misaligned action. Misaligned action 
will come because of a fear-based thought of lack or, or scarcity in some way where I need to go do this because if I don't, I might experience X, Y, or Z, like fill in the blank with any form of loss, scarcity, or, or anything like that. And so that's when the masculine energy is taking action for the sake of taking action. And that can lead to overwhelm and burnout, right? Masculine energy taking action for the sake of taking action. Whereas if you get in the habit of going inward and connecting with your feminine essence and trusting your intuition, the next right action, the next aligned action will come to you and it won't feel like force. It won't be coming from a fear-based place and it won't be coming to fill a void for some form of lack uh, or scarcity, limited belief or anything like that. It'll be coming from your own intuition. It'll be coming from your own creative spark of insight, right? And so this is, I love this part when I work with creative entrepreneurs and or work with their marketing and their messaging. I'll just use that as an example. They could be out there, post, and for all of you that run businesses, this could relate. Um, they could be out there posting on social media or trying to write a newsletter or this or that, and they could just be taking action to take action because it feels like an obligation or it feels like something they need to do. Or if they don't do it, they're not going to land a client or blah, blah, blah. There's all of these things popping up analytically of why it makes sense that they should go do X, Y, or Z and take action. Um, whereas if they tap into their feminine essence and they nurture that part of themselves and they nurture this part that is that creative flowing energy, the next message that needs to come out in their marketing will come to them and then they can take action on it, but it'll feel like an aligned intuitive action versus an action that's coming from force. Opening to receive, the other part of your question, trusting and allowing and opening to receive is two sides of the same coin, the masculine taking action. So it's not really a, I know what you're saying. You're asking, should I take action or should I, should I just be trusting and open to receive? And the action is, or the answer to that is both when you're a lot, when you're feeling called to that, right? Like always open to receive, always open to receive and always open to take aligned masculine action when it is what's arising, right? When it's naturally what's arising from a place of, you know, into from a place of just flow not force right does that make sense so it's it's a tricky question that's sort of like a paradox there right there's always a time to take action and there's always a time to be open and receive and it's okay to be in both of those simultaneously and in fact that's part of the healthy loop you take masculine action that's aligned and you're open to receive the fruits of those actions on the other end you don't have to block them. You don't have to be afraid of them. You don't have to push them away. You don't have to guard against receiving or anything like that. So it's about taking those actions, but being open to receive simultaneously. So it's not really like a, um, a, a this or that kind of thing. I hope that, I hope that resonates. <clears throat> Let me know if that helped and made sense in the comments. Uh, my questions are definitely from a place of overthinking and anxiety. I think I answered some of my questions simply by asking <laughs> perfect because we're our own gurus because we're our own gurus and if i say anything that resonates today it's because it's something that you already know to be true within yourself i'm not a guru i'm not someone that has any more tapped in than you already are i'm just reflecting back something that is resonate with resonating with you because you already know it to be true for yourself it's an inner standing it's not an understanding from a conceptual thing. It's an inner standing that's resonating and clicking. Is that making sense? Um, still a people pleaser. Yes. And so I hope that I hope that resonated with what I shared earlier. What you what you just said explains why I still have an anxious attachment instead of feeling more securely attached, like my husband, for example, who is avoid attached. Yeah. And it's, and it's, and it's, those are two sides of the same coin, right? Like those are two sides of the same coin. Um, so I'm happy that resonated. Sacred action again is an action that is intuitively guided that invokes some kind of fear and you know, it's your next step. Like you not, not like conceptually, but like your inner knowing, like intuition, intuition, your inner knowing knows it's your next step, but it invokes some kind of fear, which requires the masculine energy to have courage because masculine is the courageous energy, right? And the, the one that goes out into reality and takes action and draws boundaries and this and that it requires courage because there's fear there. The fear is an illusion 
and you know that taking that next step is going to lead to the prize on the other side. So when Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss, what he left out was that when you do follow your bliss and you go after what it is that really lights you up and what you want and what you desire, not need, desire, um, there's usually a little wall of fear around it because it's going to bust through that comfort zone of yours that is used to having something a certain way or is used to getting some kind of validation some way. Um, and so when, it, when we're talking in the context of boundaries, that sacred action is going to invoke some kind of fear that's going to sort of bust that bubble a little bit as far as whatever you were getting fed as an external form of validation, if that makes sense. And so there's fear there because there's there's, there's still limited, there's still beliefs in like loss or lack or scarcity in some way. And so then that can keep us from taking that action and drawing that boundary because we're afraid of what happens if we, if we actually do. Does that make sense? So it requires courage and that masculine energy is the one that steps up with courage. Yeah. So is this, yeah, I love it. Thank you. I'm glad that resonated. Not selfish, but self-honoring and really asking that question and knowing in your heart, if it's self-honoring, that's, that's, that's exactly where we need to be. It's self-honoring, especially because this masterclass, you know, and I, this is my experience as well. And I work with a lot of females that are empathic, that are natural givers and, um, healers and things like that, but there's a tendency to overgive and people please and, bleed your energies completely dry right with zero boundaries uh, or self-care because we're not putting ourselves first and we're not acting from the most self-honoring place so that would just be a nice little check-in is this selfish or self-honoring to be honest it, it can't be i don't even believe in selfishness so to speak but um i just there's a huge shift that takes place because that's how it feels at first, right? That's how it feels at first because we're so conditioned to not put ourselves first and to, and to be operating from a place that is self-honoring. And so it feels so sometimes foreign and can feel, this is exactly the same reason why I felt guilty taking time off for myself from a very work hustle related business and just completely over giving with my time and energy to relationships and clients and everything other than myself was because I felt guilty taking time for myself. Why would I feel guilty taking time for myself? Like that was something for me to dive deeper in, but I definitely felt guilty, like taking time for myself. I had to be doing, I had to be like, it was, it was almost like it felt selfish and that doesn't happen anymore. Right. But that's something like that can come up at the beginning because we're so conditioned to, to not be coming from a self-honoring place. I'm taking notes so fast. Perfect. Love that understanding. Understanding. Yes. Perfect. So ladies, we're going to do a quick little exercise because I know we've got about three minutes left. I just want to hear like in the comments, like a one or a 10 based on how you rate with either lacking integrated feminine or integrated masculine energy. So integrated feminine can look or feel or manifest like constant intensity. So one is if you feel this very on a low end, 10 is if it's at the high end. So constant intensity. You're always in stress mode. Maybe you have the health-related issues associated with that. You're unable to slow down and relax. So your nervous system is very, very um, on high alert, right? You're unable to slow down and relax. Over-controlling. You desire to be busy all the time. Always seeking a way to be busy. Wearing that as a potential badge of honor. Feeling guilty taking time off, burned out, feeling like you're in a hustle mode, maybe you're in a hamster wheel that you can't get off of, riding that hamster wheel of life and feeling overwhelmed. So that's lacking integrated feminine energy. So drop a one or a 10, depending on where you're at with that. Seven, 10. Three, perfect. So lacking integrated masculine energy. Used to be an eight, recently more of a four. Nice, I love that. Five. Used to be a nine. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I hear you. So lacking integrated masculine energy. 
is going to sound more look or feel or manifest like being a yes woman, total lack of boundaries, self-sacrificing, um, allowing yourself to be taken advantage of in some way, which can look like multiple ways to multiple things to different people, not filling up your cup first, putting yourself first. So you're always operating from an empty cup. You're over giving, nothing wrong with giving, but over giving. You're oftentimes wearing a happy face, but you, but inside you don't feel fine. Feeling depleted. And they both really border with overwhelmed, but so that's more like lacking integrated masculine energy. And I think you can see how that makes sense now because you know the masculine energy is giving. The masculine energy draws the boundary. And so like lack of boundaries, over giving, you know, things like that. So um, being a yes woman, externally saying yes when you really mean no, like these are all externals. So feel free to drop it in the chat box where you are with uh, lacking masculine energy, integrated masculine energy from a scale of one to 10. Interesting. Mm -hmm. 10, five, probably six, six. You're welcome, you're welcome. Keep an eye out for the recording, seven. So this is sort of a trick question and you might look at your answer and see that it's, it could be very similar, but um, it's sort of a trick question because, you know, like I said, th throughout this training that the yin and the yang, you know, the feminine and the masculine are two sides of the same coin. And if you're in that toxic loop with, with the needy feminine energy, it's going to draw in the, the, the misaligned masculine energy. Right. But when you can flip the script on that and the loop now becomes the one that is self-honoring, the one that, you know, is in alignment with your values and the healthy boundaries and all that, like the, the, the cycle shifts, right? So if you're imbalanced in one, you're going to be imbalanced in the other. When you're strong in one, like I said, the woman that walks in and knows her worth and is empowered and doesn't, you know, has no problem saying no to something that's not in alignment. She's got very strong masculine energy The needy feminine energy. The one that's constantly seeking outside of herself or on that hunt for external validation. She's going to have weaker boundaries and like the masculine energy is going to be misaligned. And so you really can't have one without the other. So it's a, it's kind of a little trick question, but that hopefully helped you gauge where you're, where um, current patterns are existing right now on both feminine and masculine side of things, if that makes sense. This session was amazing. It's good to feel your soul on goodness. Yes, this was great learning experience. Thanks for the enlightenment. Ah, you ladies, awesome. Thank you. I love the feedback. I love the feedback. So I'm going to be sending out the replay. Does anybody have any questions though before we end the call? Like I'd love to have, you can come off mute, you can share ask a question and it could be about anything that we covered any clarity whatsoever and also i will send out the replay to everybody that i um there's a i think i have yeah i have everybody's names here that attended so you guys will get access to the replay you're also going to gain access to uh, embody the empress and i have a new um thing that I'm launching that I haven't even released yet that you're going to be able to see coming up probably within the next few days. So the two ways, if you want to dive deeper into this, we barely touched on this. This is an embodiment process that takes time, right? Because there's fully working with the various archetypes, the energies behind them, making dis new decisions, allowing life to reflect back those decisions and working through this process. So there's two options if you want to dive deeper with this. One is called Embody the Empress, and that is a three-month mentorship program, and that is an embodiment program, and that's where we uh, 
I'm going to send out the details for all of that. So you can check your email and you'll be able to have a link for that. That one is a three month program and you do get an extra month if you enroll while the replay is up. So there's going to be a 48 hour replay to this. And if you decide you want to jump in uh, during the replay, while the replay is up, you actually can extend that to four months of mentorship. And so that is my embodiment program. I have another um uh, membership that's coming out that I will be announcing soon. And so I can't share the details on this, but keep an eye on your inbox because I'll be letting you know that as well. So if there are any questions, uh, if there aren't any, then we'll go ahead and wrap this up and I will send out the replay once it process, once it's done processing. My question was how to dive deeper, but you are saying it now. Yay, perfect. Yeah, that is a th um, the Embody the Empress is if where we're going to dive deep into the wounded feminine archetype. Again, I like to use the wounded very loosely. So we're going to dive into that, um, really dive deeper into masculine and feminine energy, what those are, how to identify them, identifying your own toxic loops, getting deeper on where the, why that pattern is actually persisting, really coming into healing that wounded feminine archetype and then embodying um, the other female archetypes, the divine feminine archetypes. So I like to work with archetypes, which are just energetic imprints and they play in our field and are very active and we can use those as tools to come back into alignment. And so this is about really stepping into your empress energy, owning your words, speaking your truth, authentic expression, breaking old toxic patterns that are keeping the revolving door of whatever is happening in your experience, which is unique to everybody, but keeping breaking those patterns once and for all and stepping into a more empowered and embodied place in your life and or business, right? So that's embody the empress and the other one's going to be a membership. So that one's going to be announced probably later this um probably early next week possibly tomorrow but it just depends i have to talk to my team on that so thank you ladies for attending live keep an eye on your inbox the replay if you have any questions later that pop up or any aha moments or any sacred actions that occur, come up for you as a result of this i would love to hear it you can shoot me an email i check all my emails personally i would love to hear that feedback and i look forward to seeing you soon Namaste. Welcome.